So where were we? Right, freelancing. A lot of people who have never freelanced before always tend to see the pros of it, but never really the cons. And why would they? Mostly when one is scrolling LinkedIn or if you chat to freelancers, you see and hear very little negativity and a whole lot of success stories. Fake it till you make it. Dress for the job you want. That sort of stuff. Many have tried and failed at freelancing, and that's okay. There's so many variables out of your control at times, and we all do the best we can. Last year was quite an odd one for UK freelancers across the board. It was just a complete lull for 3D artists, producers, retouchers, photographers, and even chatting to recruiters on the phone would have me trying to decipher their nervous giggles when saying they're waiting to hear if a job was actually going to happen or not. If I do not have work for one day, I lie in bed and do the whole worries me routine. My husband, he always laughs and says it'll come. And it does, like an avalanche. And then I completely get stressed out because then run enough hours in the day. When I was younger, I could pull all-nighters, no problem. But these days, 12-hour days are probably my limit. And we can go into if it's fair or not, but any freelancer will tell you it is what it is. The greatest thing about a little freelancer club is that we have a deep connection. A deep connection created by trauma bonding that only a creative will know. Everything is always urgent. Everything is last minute, mostly. No matter how much planning gets done, there's always some sort of hold up and dare I say, it's usually with the client. But it is what it is and we get through it. The main takeaway from this freelancing game is the lack of stability. Stable income? Not really. Stable hours? No. Sometimes not even stable in location. Sometimes I have to work in an office other than my own. One thing that is stable is my husband, Neil. We started dating in 2013 when I was still working for one of the worst jobs I ever had. And by the time we got married a few days before the world imploded in 2020, I was already a few years into freelancing full time. But I've done this completely on my own, not at all. I can honestly say that if I was single, there's no way in hell I would have the foot switch to freelance. I literally have my biggest fan living with me and it makes all the difference. Having a backup of being dinks, double income, no kids, just note that, is incredibly helpful as well. Neil has the Riz, I also just learned what that is. He's a great signing board. He helps me be a little bit more diplomatic in my responses to issues. He's so down to listen to my rants when he gets home from work. I couldn't be luckier. I get tons of Instagram and LinkedIn messages from freelancers asking how I got into freelancing or how I get clients. And by a ton, I mean maybe five a year. So let me start from the beginning. 